hello so I have been pondering what to do what to create um, and what to paint and um, for some reason what came into my head was this idea of dinosaurs and this was yesterday and I thought my kids used to absolutely love dinosaurs they've all been into dinosaurs and all liked them and I actually then thought that um, whilst everybody's kind of locked down and at home and we're looking for things for kids to do, I've been trying to make some videos that are mindful watercolours that are aimed at children, um, that are exercises they could do. And I grabbed out these paints, they're major brushes, and this is a major brushes brush. And they're this brand because when I go and do stuff in school with kids or with teachers or workshops or whatever, I try to use the supplies that the school has, so rather than using my own brushes and my own paints, I go and I use what they have. And if they have not really got paints, or if they've gone for using tubes of paints, I often suggest that they try these and I show the staff them because they are reasonably priced, they're decent quality, and being in pans, they're actually easier to use with less waste than tubes when you've got classes of kids. Um, and so I grabbed those out in my brush and I've grabbed out just a, a palette and I sat down and I started thinking about dinosaurs and I made what I thought was going to be a fab little video where I talked you through how I would simplify dinosaurs and I'd found on Pinterest this idea of making paper plate dinosaurs where you use the semicircle and then you put little bits onto it and I was using that idea to draw with and this was the first one I did and I talked about how as an artist when you are trying things out in your sketchbook it doesn't matter if they don't all work and you don't like them and I was saying that I didn't really like the way the pencil line looked and I found that I, I wasn't loving the blue of the horns even though I really like that colour and I did a second one here and changed a couple of things made the legs a little bit shorter I added and used pencil for my outline and I used purple for the horns and I quite liked that and I enjoyed the combination of colours and I made my green a little bit more yellow in this one and so I went on and used that same semicircle shape and created a kind of stegosaurus and then a brachiosaurus and then I went on in my little video that I thought was filming and showed you how to make and how I would then use these ideas of shapes and animal shapes to create a mindful watercolour page and I talked about mindful watercolours and then I stopped to let this dry and realised that somewhere along the way I had pressed the wrong button and when I thought I'd been turning the video on to record, I'd been turning it off. And when I thought I was turning it off, I was turning it on. So what I'd ended up doing was recording all the bits that I didn't want that weren't me painting. <laughs> and yesterday I felt very frustrated so I put this to one side and thought I would come back to it. But I really love how I think this is going to turn out and I really like this idea. I was looking for some simple supplies so in it I used my paints, my brush, I used a pencil crayon, I used a black pen, I used an ordinary HB pencil and then two things that mm, you might not have around. One is a paper blending stump but you can use something like a cotton board or you can use your finger or an eyeshadow brush or an eyeshadow, one of those spongy eyeshadow brushes that used to they're kind of a bit old-fashioned I think now but they're like little pads they can be quite good and a white pen but you can do it without these and you could also instead of a white pen if you've got gel pens you could use those so those are kind of the supplies I've got and I'm going to show you how to paint the three different shapes that I've got on here and I'm going to show you how I create a mindful kind of watercolour page Now, the one thing I haven't altered is my paper um, my paper is 300 GSM or 140 pound watercolour paper. That means it's really heavy and quite thick. And when it gets wet, it doesn't um, bend and suck up. If you don't have thick paper and you've only got, say, printer copy of paper, I'm not going to lie, it is going to be a little bit more tricky. And what you might find is that you need to have a little bit of a practice to see how you can get it to work. If you've got a sketch pad that's got slightly thicker paper in, say about 90 pound, then it will work okay, but your paper might crinkle. If 
you do have some thicker paper that's watercolor paper that's that's the thing that will make it easiest it can work but have a bit of a practice just using the paints on a piece of copier paper now I don't actually have any spare copier paper because we've pretty much used up um, a lot of it in the printer so I'm not I don't want to use up the little bits that we've got left and I couldn't find a scrap to use um, so I'm going to use this paper now when I'm talking about being mindful and doing mindful watercolors really really simply what that means is my mind is going to be full of what I'm doing so I'm going to be thinking about just what I'm painting and what the paints are doing and the shapes I'm making and really being focused on that thing that I'm doing right now you can be mindful about anything it can be mindful about washing the dishes you can be mindful about eating your food you can be mindful going on a walk you can be mindful about singing all kinds of things but I'm mindful with my watercolours. Another thing that's really important for me in my mindful watercolours is my internal voice. I think everybody has a voice in their head that kind of, you know, offers a commentary sometimes. And it's really just you and what you think about things. It's your thinking voice, I suppose. Now, my internal voice can sometimes be a bit critical of my art and it can be a bit unkind to me and so I practice a lot getting my internal voice, the voice in my head, me talking to myself to be kinder so if my uh, talking to myself was saying I'm not good, you're not good at art that's really awful, that's rubbish then I would stop and I would say no I am good at art it might not be exactly what I want yet. And when it says you can't paint, it might be, well, I can't paint as well as I want to yet, but I will be able to if I keep practicing. And if my voice offering my thoughts in my head, like my internal voice, starts saying things that are negative like that, I tend to stop it now and I tend to go, no, I don't want to be thinking like that. I don't want to be talking to myself in my head like that. I want to be kind and I want to be helpful to myself. Um, if you've already got a kind internal voice, then that's awesome. But I've had to work a bit with mine because my internal voice could be a bit critical and a bit unkind to me. So that getting my internal voice to talk to me kindly is really important. And one of the things that I think is tricky sometimes with that when you are creating art, and anybody who creates art is an artist, is that you sometimes make things you don't like and they don't turn out how you intended and you don't like them. And as an artist, you have to be okay with that and know that you are going to make stuff you don't like and you're going to have another go and you might make something that you like a bit better but you don't like another bit and those bits that you don't like are really important because they help you to know what you don't like and that then helps you to know what you do like and what you want to move towards so when I was doing my dinosaurs I knew I liked the, the shape, I knew I liked the horns, but I didn't like the outline and I didn't like the long legs. And that helped me, knowing that helped me to make a second one that I liked more. And that helped me make a third one and a fourth one that I liked more. And so that, knowing what we like and what we don't like, and be able to talk about that and to say what that is, it's really important. I've got a posh word for that, I call it discernment. And I say about my internal voice, I want it to be discerning to know what it likes and doesn't like without being judgmental, without telling me I'm bad or I'm good. So that's one of the things I practice when I'm being mindful. So I have my mind full of what I'm doing and stay with it and concentrating and thinking about that I suppose is better work than concentrating and I try to have a really kind internal voice and I also try to approach it all with a kind of sense of curiosity um, that 
I might not know exactly what's going to happen and that's kind of fun and I'm exploring and seeing what will happen if and sometimes I'll get things I don't like and sometimes I get things I do like and either of those is good because they both help me to learn more and to grow more as an artist and someone who creates so when I'm saying I'm being mindful it's those things that I'm thinking about now often for me when I'm being mindful I find it quite relaxing and if I'm feeling worried about things or anxious or like my brain is busy with lots of thoughts then I can find doing this after I've practiced it for a little bit you know, really helps me to feel calmer and more settled and more I suppose grounded is a, a word that I would use and I hope it does that for you but that that's your choice if you want to do it and use those mindful principles then I think they're a really good thing and they really help me but you might want to just paint dinosaurs and that's cool too so normally when I start doing a painting I'll put my feet flat on the floor and I'll take three nice deep breaths and I'll make sure I'm relaxing my shoulders and I'm comfy in my seat and I'll remind myself of those mindful kind of ideas and that I'm intending to do this mindfully and that I'm going to be really thinking about what I'm doing and present with that so I won't be thinking about what I'm doing tomorrow or what somebody said to me yesterday or what I'm eating for tea but I'll be thinking about the paint and what the paint's doing and the colours I'm mixing and the shapes I'm making and that will use a kind internal voice and I'll remember that it, those things that I like or don't like are helping me to improve as an artist and I'll approach you with a bit of fun and curiosity. So, first thing I want to do is I've got a pot of water next to me, and my pot of water sits on a tea towel. And so I'm wetting my brush, and I'm going to bring it over here, and I'll do this so you can see, so I'll move it over a little bit. And I go round and round and round in that light green. Now, when you've seen what I've done, you might decide you don't want green dinosaurs, you might want pink do the same thing but in pinks and you can change the colour of pinks by maybe adding blues so I'm going to put two or three wet my brush again in here round and round don't press too hard and you should never be squashing your brush so that the bristles come out you should always have a nice point I'm not squashing it straight down and making my bristles come out like that that will hurt my brush my brush will be sad but I am picking up lots and lots of pigment so I've got that lighter green in there wash my brush off really well and then I'm going to pick up some of the yellow and I'm going round and round and round again and this kind of wets the top so that our paint works and you can see when I mix that in it's got a little bit more yellowy I think I'm going to need two or three more lots of the yellow that's closer that's much closer I think a little bit more of the yellow then into my brush into my water and I'm loading up with water and I'm going to put one you can see my brush is really drippy two and just to make a watery mix of that paint colour I might even need one more and this is what I'm going to use to make some of my shapes. So I'm going to start off and I'm going to pop myself a semicircle. So draw my curvy line and then join straight across, across, and I'm filling that in with some paint. Pick up some more paint and I am going to put on four little stumpy legs you can see they're kind of like little squares and then I'm going to put on a little tail here that just curves up makes a little bit of a point and then I'm just making sure by going on the bottom that that green colour is spread out a little bit I want to make sure I've got a nice smooth curvy shape there I think I might want a slightly longer tail just a little bit longer, that's better, I like that better. Then I'm going to draw the shape for the triceratops head. Now, 
Triceratops head has like um, a curved top is where its frill goes and then it comes down like this to sort of almost a beak shape or a pointy shape like that and it, it joins about here so what I'm doing is just getting that shape in it's a bit hard to see because I've painted the semicircle first where, where it overlaps but that's okay I am just going to pop in a little bit more paint so you can see it but you don't have to pop in lots of paint if you don't want to because we can make it so we outline it when we put the pencil in so I'm just trying to get that in kind of right-ish um, and because it's on a little bit of an angle, it's a little bit tricky. So I'm just having a little look there to see. And that's okay. Not my best triceratops shape, but it's, it's not too bad. And I'm loving the colour. So I'm going to have another go down here for another triceratops shape. And I'm going to start it in just the same way. And I draw a semicircle. I'm going to fill the semicircle in with some of that light green yellowy green paint you can see I'm stroking you can always see the point of my brush and being really gentle with my brush and I pop on my legs so one two three four this time I'm going to put the towel this side like that you might hear my children upstairs they're uh, having a little bit of time on their computers at the moment and then I am going to curve this round and I'm going to curve that there and I'll pop on the curvy top bit of the frill and then fill that shape in using the paint and this is drawing with paint but it's different to drawing with a pencil it's hard to stop because if you stop your paint will dry you don't really want that to happen so there we go that's that one now I'm going to do one of these lovely stegosaurus shapes I think I think I'm gonna pop one here so I'm gonna do now that the semicircle like this just the same really and then I'm going to pop the four little stumpy legs on then for the stegosaurus it has kind of um, almost a, a squared off head like this, the little short head and then his tail comes quite kind of fat at the base and thick and then goes to a point and I've squashed his tail in a little bit there and I'm going to pop you know, one of the brachiosaurus kind of shapes in here down at the bottom I'd forgotten to turn my lights on so I'm hoping that film's okay I'm really sorry I'd forgotten to turn my lights on it's such a sunny day here I forgot I would need them I'm going to pop a kind of taller semicircle like this and for these I only put two little bobbly legs on so there's one there's two and he's going to have a little tail just here like that I have a head and his head's going to come all the way up here and he's going to have a little curvy neck and then that's where his head's going to be and it's going to come down here and you can see at the moment it looks like he's got a really thin neck so I'm just going to make that a little bit thicker and join it on here there we go, got one of those in there and I'm going to pop another one of those in here a nice tall 
kind of shape. And a little bit more water in my paint because it's drying out a little bit. And then I'm going to give him a little tail here. And then I'm going to have his head coming up nice and tall. Coming round into his head like that. I give him a very big head this time, that's quite fun. And then have it come down to his body like this. So he's looking backwards this time, which is quite fun. One of the things you can do if you want to, to add some interesting kind of patterns and textures, get a wet brush. You don't want it to be drippy, so take a little bit of the water off on the edge of your pot. And then if you just touch the tip of your wet brush, in a minute you'll see the water starts to make really fun patterns for you. If you look back and you want to do that on one of your previous ones, you can just get a little bit more paint and just paint over it so you've wet the paint on the top. And you can do the same again. So I've added some to that one as well. You can see here they're making really cool patterns. I pick up some more of my yellowy green paints and I am going to pop another stegosaurus in. I think I might do one here. And I'm going to do one a little bit of an angle like this. His feet might be a little bit close to that head, but we'll see what we can do. So we'll put really short feet in this time, really short little legs like that. And we'll put his little square head under this side. Oops, I made that a little bit too long. So if you make a mistake with watercolours, pop a little bit of water, get a tissue and press it really hard. It will lift up a lot of the paint for you. So I can actually put that right if I'm careful and get my head so it's not on his foot. And then I can draw a nice curvy tail there. Just some water now on my brush to dot in and leave some fun patterns. And then I think I might pop another one of those brachiosauruses here there we go, let's give it a nice tall back like that and here's two little stumpy legs, there's one there's two and there's his little tail and I'm going to put this tall head in here like that there we go He's looking pretty fab. And I'm thinking that I might have a little bit of a stegosaurus head kind of sticking out here. And I might have a brachiosaurus head just coming up, just the head part, just down here. So I can't see the body because it's gone off the page. And then I can see I've still got some gaps. And what I'm going to do in those gaps is draw some leaves. Now these bits need to dry before we can put eyes and things on them. So while I'm waiting for them to be dry, I'm going to get this dark green. I'm going to mix it in here. So I've got a darker green that I can use to make leaves. And everywhere where I feel like I've got a gap, I'm going to put this really simple leaf. So I'm going to draw a line, a thin line, like in the middle. And then a little kind of round top. And then I'm going to draw, it's like a triangle, so I go up, round and back. So I'm getting a kind of triangle shaped leaf almost. I'll just turn that a little bit to make it a bit easier for myself. And I'm going to pop another one in. I think I might have one here. And I pop the top of the leaf there. And this is just about it's getting some nice leafy details in there. I think I'll put a nice long one here. And I might do more rounded kind of leaves this time because that seems to be what my brush is really wanting to do. So I'm going to let it do that. 
and then pick up some more of that dark green paint I'm going to pop a leaf in here it's going to go off the page so I won't see the top bit a bit more of that dark green and uh, it's going to be here I think I'm going to have one just the top of one here I'm going to have one here definitely going to have one in here I'm going to have a little bit of one there one there and a little top here so I'm going to go in and put all their little bits of leaves on now now I know where they're going to be these leaves they're, what, they're called opposite because there's one leaf opposite the other Sometimes on plants you get them so they kind of go in little steps. So you get one there and then you get one a little step down. And those ones are called alternate leaves. So I'm just making sure these are going in. I'm quite close to that one so I made it a bit smaller. Over here I've got more room so I can make these a bit bigger. And they don't have to be the same or neat. I'm enjoying the way my brush feels on the paper and I'm just going to have a look, I think I might want a little one there and do I want any anywhere else? I might want one here there we go and so I've got my basic shapes and my leaves painted and you'd need to leave that to dry completely Luckily, I have my dry one from yesterday, so I'm going to go on to doing the details on that. And what I'm going to do first is I'm going to give them their eyes. So I'm going to use my black pen and just draw a round circle for the Brachiosaurus and a round circle for the Stegosaurus. And then for Triceratops, there's a Brachiosaurus head there as well, isn't there? The Triceratops, they get two eyes. So, one, two. And I tend to like them quite wide apart. That's my first little step. I don't actually need my black pen again after that. My next little step then is to use my pencil. And I'm just going to give a gentle kind of outline to them and I'm going to show you how I draw the mouth onto the triceratops so you do a little squiggly smile not sure I've got that quite right actually I'm going to grab my rubber because if I'm careful I can take it off now I think that I think that I might need to go the other way to the way my brain wants to do it. I think I've just got a slightly different shape. This one curves. Ah, I see what it is. It's curves. Ah, there we go. Just needs a little pointy bit there. So I'm going to do that triceratops up he head up here as well while I'm remembering that. that. I need to do that. And I like to make them curve up. And then I'm going to come back to this one. I'm just going to go around the body. and around the little stubby legs and when I've done that I'm going to get my paper blending tool and I'm just going to smudge where there would be a shadow so along here where the head is by the body would be a bit of a shadow and there and then along here kind of where the tummy is there might be one and down that leg and kind of here and then I might have one going along here a little bit here and I can use my finger as well if I want to just to go, do a little bit of smudging so I'm going to do that on this one up here as well just a little bit of smudging now just along there where the head joins the body 
and kind of underneath the legs a little bit around those curvy bits bottom of the tail maybe there might even do a little bit up here just a little bit with my finger there you go and then the next thing I need to do on the triceratops is around the eyes I'm drawing just a couple of little kind of circles like that and then because they've got a frill what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw teardrop shapes I'm drawing these in pencil first going along the frill like that different how I did the frill on my one here because I just wanted to try something different and then I'm going to colour each of those in oh squash my point each of those in purple with my crayon Now you could draw them in the crayon first and then outline them if you wanted to. That would be fine too. Then I'm going to put on the horns. Now when I'm doing the horns, I do two lines to make like the sides of a triangle and then a curvy bottom. And then here I'm going to do a bigger horn. And then here I'm going to do a bigger horn again and still do that curvy bottom <coughs> excuse me and do the same over here so there's that kind of horn on the nose and I've got a horn I'm going to do there so that's going off my page so I can't see the point of it and I'll do another one here And I can do their frill, so that's coloured in as well. And then the next thing that I think I'm going to do is I think I'm going to check that I've got a nice outline everywhere. And I may put a little outline on those horns so that they've got a pencil outline as well. Check that I've got a nice line and that I'm happy with those. And I'm going to pop in the little toes. So two or three little curves, a bit like drawing a letter M or a M. And I grab my white pen now and I fill those little curvy toenails in white you could fill them in purple or you could use a gel pen if you've got sparkly gel pen or if you've got felt tip pen that you want to use I'm going to put a little white dot in each eye and then onto the horns I'm going to put a line and two dots and that's just a little bit like there is some light shining on the horn I'm also going to put a little white dot if I can get it to work in the middle of each of those little purple teardrops that I put on the front and then the last thing I'm going to do with my white pen I'm going to put some little white dashes just on the triceratops body just to give it some interesting texture you could use a pencil really lightly and just some, put some light dashes like that or you could do spots if you wanted to and then I might put a little white line here with two dots just like we did on the horns just as if there's a light reflection on there 
and then those little triceratops are done and quite cheery so I'm going to do my stegosauruses next so I've got three of those that one that one and that one I'm going to start at my top one and just outline the body shape and the tail like that and do it again over here And then the last one just down here. There we go. And then I can get my pencil smudgy tool. And for the stake source, I think maybe bottom of the head, bottom of the tail here, and then kind of where his tummy would be. And maybe a little bit just along here and then I'm going to do the same here again and you can use your finger or another tool that will just smudge it a little bit for you really and just add in a little bit of smudge to that then I'm going to pop the stegosaurus's mouth on and again it's a little bit of a line and it curves up a little bit of a line and it curves up and then I'm going to pop on his toes while I'm doing the drawing parts with my pencil. There we go. Like that. And I'm going to pop on his spikes. I'm going to use my purple pen for that. And I'm going to draw triangles. Go along his back and all the way down his tail but getting a little bit smaller towards the end of his tail I'm going to go back and fill those in I'm going to do that on this one looking lovely and then I've just got some spikes to do on here I've just got three I think to pop on there I need to do his toes as well I'm going to do that while I remember and then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just put some little purple spots on his tummy so just just a few not loads and loads few purple spots and now I'm going to get out my white pen and do toenails first And then I'm going to put a little white dot in his eye. And then I am going to put some little white dots, just three, along one side of his spikes. A little bit like we did the lines and the dots on the triceratops. Yeah. 
You could do these in silver pen or gold pen, or you could just mist them off if you wanted to, or if you don't have a pen. Then the last thing I'm going to put some white dashes just above those kind of purpley spots in his body just to make it a bit more of an interesting texture. Just little ones, just here and there. And that's the Stegosaurus is done. So the last thing we've got is the Brachiosaur and it's exactly the same kind of process. So we go round the shape in our pencil. We're not pressing too heavily. You certainly couldn't, if you put your finger over, you wouldn't feel a dent where my pencil has been. We're not doing a heavy line, just a, a light outline. So it's dark enough for us to see. And I'm going to pop that on all of them first. Then we do a little bit of smudging where we think the shadows might be. So round by their tummy, at the bottom of their tail. And then on the inside of their head and down that bit of their neck. Because their long neck would cast a bit of a shadow, I bet. And maybe even there because the head's hanging over. Then when we've done that, we can... Oh, I know what I forgot. We've got to do little circles around the eyes. We need to do that to the Stegosaurus as well, because all my eyes have got those little circles around them. And then next we're going to draw some spots. So we draw a few big spots. And we make sure that we've got one or two of those big spots that go on halfway on and halfway off. So they go along to the edge of a line and we draw part of the spot. And do the same thing over here to Brachiosaurus. So we do the big ones first. And then we do some smaller ones that go in some of the spaces. And it would probably have been a good idea if I'd have drawn his toenails first. But I'm pretty sure it will be okay. I'll pop his toenails on now. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. And then the next thing we do is get our white pen, put a little white dot in his eye, and then some of those little white dashes that we've put on everybody. Just going to pop them between his spotty bits and we can colour his toenails in do that again now have you spotted what I've forgotten to put on to the Brachiosaurus well, if you did you're very observant. I forgot to put on his mace. So, it's a little bit of a line, straight up. A little bit of a line and straight up. A little bit of a line and straight up. And there, all their faces and bodies. I've got all those lovely marks on. And they've got their lovely outlines. And I'm just checking on my outlines that there's a nice line everywhere I need one. I think I might put some pencil lines around the Stegosaurus' spikes because I think that will help them feel really part of his body and there we've got a really lovely page of dinosaurs if you feel like there are some spaces you can pop in just some dots of colour you've used for their horns and their spikes and their spots and they will just fill in any little gaps 
that your eye is getting drawn to to make your page look finished. And that is a page of Mindful Dinosaurs. I really hope you enjoyed making them. I hope you had fun. And if you make your own, I would love to see them. So maybe your parents will pop them onto Instagram or onto their Facebook account and they could tag me in. Maybe you'd like to send me an email with yours in. And maybe if you're a grown-up who's doing this like I am and really likes dinosaurs and is finding them quite fun, maybe you'd like to just tag me in on your account when you share them because I really do love to see um, what you create. So... I hope you enjoyed that and I'll see you really soon.